The internal parts of the turbocharger must be cleaned and inspected periodically, depending on the combustion condition, operating hours, and other attributes of the engine. Remove the nuts connecting the silencer and the scroll beginning with the bottom side. Also, loosen the bolts that fasten the vibration stopper plate and remove the silencer. Store the removed silencer in a safe place so that it doesn't turn over. With a clearance gauge, measure the clearance between the air inlet casing and the impeller at four locations, top, bottom, right, and left. These data will be necessary during reassembly. If the gas inlet casing is removed from the engine, measure the clearance between the turbine wheel and the gas inlet casing at four locations, top, bottom, right, and left in the same manner. Attach the eye bolt to the threaded hole at the boss of the scroll and lift with a wire rope. Remove the air inlet casing. Draw out the casing by screwing the removed bolt slowly into the threaded hole at the fringe of the casing. Remove the V-band to remove the scroll. If it is not removed easily, knock it out with a shockless hammer. The scroll is attached with a diffuser. When storing the scroll, secure it so it doesn't turn over or damage the diffuser vein. Remove the bearing pedestal attached with the rotor shaft from the engine, leaving the gas inlet casing on the engine. Lift the bearing pedestal. Remove the two bolts that fasten the fitting table and the bearing pedestal. Next, loosen the nut to remove the stopper plate. The packing is between the bearing pedestal and the gas inlet casing. Put the bearing pedestal in a place easy to work on and support so that it does not incline. Next, measure the thrust clearance. These data will be needed for reassembly. If the thrust bearing is filled with lubricating oil, Accurate measurement is not obtained. Turn the rotor shaft 10 times or more. Set the dial gauge on the end of the rotor shaft. The thrust clearance is the difference of the divisions on the dial gauge 
when the rotor shaft is pushed to the compressor side and to the turbine side alternately. Take at least five measurements and check that the values do not vary. Before removing the impeller, measure the distance from the end of the nut to the shaft end with a depth gauge. You will need this dimensional value for checking that the amount of tightening is correct after reassembly. Next, attach the dial gauge to the end of the rotor shaft. Manually turn the rotor shaft in reverse direction of the operation and measure the deflection with the dial gauge. These data will be needed for comparison during reassembly. Please check if the match marks of the impeller and the shaft nut align with each other. If they don't, take the record of the relative positions, that is, the circumferential movement of the shaft nut. While holding the turbine wheel, loosen the locking nut with a spanner. Remove the washer. Attach impeller removal fittings to the boss of the impeller using bolts. Slowly turn the handle and pull out the impeller. Carefully store the impeller, placing horizontally in a safe place. Remove the bolts and the oil thrower. If the oil thrower is not removed easily, Lift off while screwing the bolts into the threaded hole of the oil thrower. Remove the sleeve. Remove the support. After removing the bolts, screw the removed bolts into the threaded hole in the flange and lift off. The support is fitted with the compressor side thrust bearing. Next, remove the thrust collar. Protect the rotor shaft by winding thin tape around the tip of the thread part.